Hey guys, Josh here from Sportitude Running. Today it is shoe review time and we're going to be talking all things Mizuno Wave Inspire 17, this shoe here. Now it's had quite the update from where it was with the 16. We're talking about a new execution with the outsole. There's some more goodness in the midsole and they have ever so slightly manipulated the support and the breathability in the upper. So um, yeah, today's review, we're gonna get through quite a bit. I'm gonna talk about the foot type that could be considering the Wave Inspire 17 profile that runner, see where it fits into your potential shoe rotation, and give you all the information you need at home to potentially make your next shoe choice. So, without further ado, let's get stuck in. Okay guys, so what we'll do first up is talk about the foot type that should be considering this shoe. So, this shoe does sit on a slightly stable platform. So what I mean by that is we've got a little bit of arch support on the inside, and Mizuno used that with a double wave technology. So when we're talking about a medial support, we're talking about a foot that ever so slightly looks like this. Slightly flatter in the arch, this is a static position of course, but for the runner that makes entry point on that heel, comes through to mid starts, and we have a little bit of a tendency to just roll in over that arch, therefore we'll see a little bit of rotation through that shin, knee, and hip. So the concept of the arch support is just to reduce the impact of that overpronation, not stop it, just to reduce the impact of that strike zone through there. And the shoe itself is on a cushioned platform, so we've got um, a really nice soft entry point and then a relatively responsive top layer with their foam as well, which we'll get to in the mid, into the midsole component of the review. Now, in terms of the engineering uh, of this shoe, we're gonna start from the ground and work our way up. So this is probably, um, I would like to say, the biggest change with this shoe. And as you can see underneath, we've got full ground contact. So from the toe right through to the heel, you can see there's a component of rubber the whole way through there. Compare it to the Mizuno Wave Inspire 16, I hold the women's here in front of me, so the 17 and the 16. You can see underneath there is a slight separation between the heel unit and the forefoot unit, and it's mainly to do with this trussic beam through here. Now, we still see trussic beams in running shoes to this day, but um, when we come to the middle part of 2021, uh, I will be very surprised if there's any serious contenders in that mileage category that have that trustic beam. So we're seeing Mizuno taking it out, or, or sorry, not showing it. ASICS will be doing the same come the middle of next year. And Brooks New Balance and Sokini have been doing it for a few years now, where they've reduced the, um, the trustic system or removed the trustic system by putting a midsole and outsole component over the top. So with that outsole configuration, being that it is full ground contact, you still got your element of flexibility through the forefoot. So what we mean by that is you got one, two, and say two and three quarters in regards to the flexibility through that forefoot. So you don't want to lose that nice and easy transition from mid stance to toe off. You want to make sure the shoe is flexing all the right areas, but supporting that forefoot at the same time. So you can see how it's encapsulated right through here, and that essentially sits right underneath your big toe, so it doesn't put too much load on that toe when it's going through mid stance to toe off. You don't want to put too much or increase the range of movement through that toe um, through there. So essentially, that's why brands in their supportive shoes are just configuring the outsole to look a little bit like this, where it gives that toe a little bit more structure through there. And the other thing to note is there's a quite, almost like a, a bigger sort of cutaway in the midsole through here. So yes, it's full ground contact, but they have almost got this vertical decoupled line that runs right up to the mid start section through here. So the reason they have been able to do that, Mizuno, is more to do with the midsole technology. So this component through here, so if you follow my finger around and underneath through there, and around to this medial side. Through, I'm sorry, I'll do that again. So right underneath the heel, underneath the forefoot through here, they're almost a big large horseshoe shape. The foam between the wave plate and the ground, wave plate and the ground, is their new NRZ foam. So let's get stuck into the midsole now, because the NRZ foam is a foam that they've used for a couple of seasons now. They've rolled it out in their wave sky, and now they're introducing it to more of their premium road running shoes. Now that foam is very soft, and it's soft in regards to where it sits. So it sits underneath the wave plate, so therefore that first entry point for your heel striker, you're getting a nicer compression underneath your foot, and therefore they're able to take weight out or less of a traditional EVA foam out from that component because this foam is doing a lot more for the runner. So you can reduce the weight by still keeping it nice and soft underneath that entry point. And then on top of that, um, the wave plate through here. So the wave plate just runs right through to just after uh, mid stance, both in the medial to lateral side through there. 
Now, the wave plate itself is structurally placed to give the shoe a little bit of integrity and your foot a bit more support when it makes contact with the ground. But the foam on top of the wave plate all the way through to the forefoot is the Euphoric foam. And they used Euphoric and Euphoric X in last season's model. So the Euphoric X was essentially underneath the wave plate where the NRZ foam is here and the Euphoric cushioning system is a slightly more responsive layer and that runs all the way on top of that wave plate. So they're essentially using the same concept with the 17 with the 16 through here. So that Euphoric cushioning system runs the whole way through to the forefoot. So you get a really good combination of compression on entry and then as you come through to mid starts to toe off, you're getting that little push out of your gait cycle which is what that Euphoric cushioning system does really well inside this shoe. And as we touched on in the intro, it is a supportive shoe. So on the medial side, through here you can see they've got that double fan wave plate which strategically placed underneath the arch through here just to hold that midsole up over its uh, over the the life of the shoe so from that first kilometer to the last kilometer the foam around the shoe will essentially break down that happens that happens with running shoes however the support system will stay nice and structured throughout the life of the shoe a slight change in how they've executed that wave plate a uh, wave fan wave technology part of me if I bring the old 16 a little bit closer you can see how they are, it's a little bit higher. So it covers a little bit more of the area or the surface area on that medial side. So they've just shaved it down a little bit so it's not quite as noticeable on the foot. However, if you cut it away, it does come a little bit more through the midsole and the medial side through here. So you do get a slightly more supportive, dynamic supportive shoe without feeling like you've got that on your foot. Now for my personal opinion, when I've always worn a Wave Inspire, I've from that first step in, you know you've got an archer port shoe on your foot. It's just there. It's noticeable. It's playing there. And for me, it was okay. I, I didn't mind running in them. It certainly didn't change the way I ran. I just knew I had an element of archer port. Now, there are some runners out there that want that. They want that feel. They want to step their foot into a shoe and go, ha, there's the archer port. I'm confident with that. You may not get that support as much inside this shoe. So when you step into this, I almost felt like I had a stable neutral shoe on my foot. So it was sort of felt along the lines of what the Brooks Ghost does in that category. And even the Adrenaline, and it contradicts those two shoes, but a slight take on dynamic support system. And the reason they've been able to do that is a lot to do with the increased surface area underneath the foot. So you get a little bit more real estate underneath. So you get a little bit more control, a little bit more stable platform. And then you can just ever so slightly reduce that impact of that medial support because the shoe is gonna run nicer, a lot smoother, and it won't be quite as intrusive underneath that arch. So I you know, tip my hat to Mizuno. I think they've executed a very good arch support on the Wave Inspire 17. And just the last thing to touch on the midsole, let's go into the heel to toe drop. So it is a 12 millimeter offset. That's on the higher um, higher aspect of, the, of what we classify as a norm out there in the industry. So generally speaking, we see the majority of road running shoes be eight to 10 millimeters. Some high mileage shoes do drop down to your six, but at a 12 millimeter offset, that's a pretty generous heel to toe lift. And it's 31 mil in the heel, and we've got 19 mil on the forefoot, and that's both men's and women's. So 12 mil drop. Um, I would probably say for me, I mean, it's the same as last year as well. That feels like a 12 mil drop, no doubt about it. But for me, this shoe here, well, the men's, so I'll hold it up here, that probably feels a little bit more like a 10, to be completely fair. Um, I don't, I didn't notice that heel to toe gradient as much as what I have in previous models. So um, I personally think that's a good thing. It's just changing that first fit and feel on your foot. Um, and I think that will be um, a good, good thing for this shoe because it will certainly be a lot more competitive against other shoes out there in the market. Now let's dive into the upper. I think Mizuno over the last five to six years have done an exceptional job with their heel counters and this Wave Inspire 17 is no different. So there is an internal heel counter set up through here. So the plastic system which sits inside the collar sits around the back of your heel through there so it keeps your foot or your heel part of me nice and secure for that first entry. You're not going to be moving around on the platform. And this year they've gone ever so slightly, or a little bit lower with the height of the heel counter. So if I put the two shoes together here, last year's and this year's, you can see almost like a bucketed system. So what Mizuno have done through here with the midsole is ever so slightly, it just wraps up around the foot a little bit more. So what I'm doing here, I'll try to do this at home, let's see how I go, but it wraps up around your heel a little bit more. So therefore you can reduce the amount of height you've got in heel counter. So it still runs really, really stable, but it just doesn't, doesn't quite climb up your Achilles as much as what previous models have done. And the memory foam, which sits on the inside part of this heel collar is 
almost perfect. It is the perfect combination of a little bit of padding, but with that little squeeze and pinch around the back of your Achilles, so you get that nice secure fit. Minimize that vertical movement and friction at the back of the shoe through there. And the other great thing they've done with this model is they've just increased the overlay support through the midsection, so both on the medial and lateral side, purely by strategically placing some of these cosmetic strips through here and that little V through there. So that little cradle you get through your mid stance phase of your gait cycle, so entry to mid stance. You don't want your foot moving around on the platform, that will defeat the purpose of the midsole. You want to keep it nice and secure on top, and that's exactly what those overlayers do. And as you come through to the forefoot, it is a double layered or engineered air mesh, that's what Mizuno call it. Essentially, that is a nice strong setup, but you get plenty of breathability. The holes that they've got through that forefoot now, is a li uh, they're a little bit larger, and they can do that because the underlay is a little bit stronger, but nice and breathable too. The actual fit of the shoe, if I've got to be fair, I like the change. The change is it's a little bit more shallow on top, so you certainly feel like a bit more security through that forefoot. Mizuno's, over the last couple of seasons, I've always found there's a bit of wriggle room through that forefoot through here, which again has probably been a good thing for a lot of runners out there, but for me personally, that in conjunction with a couple of other facets was why I didn't range this shoe for myself um, with my mileage running. I could certainly see myself doing some Ks in the Wave Inspire 17 because the fit's pure, it's nice, it's secure, but not too tight. I love what they're doing with the upper, keeping your foot on the platform. And this change to that full ground contact in conjunction with that execution of softness and responsiveness, yeah, they're doing a lot in this shoe, which is fantastic. I really, really like what they're about this year. Okay, guys, like I've done in previous shoe reviews, um, I've called out the fact when a brand makes a shoe in widths, they actually care. And Mizuno, done it again. So what we've got through here with the ladies, you've got a B width, which is standard, and then you have a D, which is slightly broader. So two widths on offer. In the men's, we've got a D standard and a 2E, which is slightly broader as well. So two widths again with that shoe there. Now, please note that the widths are in different colors, and there'll be a link to our website um, in this description of the video below, so you can take you through to have a look at what, what colors are on offer for each and every width. Um, one thing that I would like to say with Mizuno, that um, this shoe here, the Mizuno Wave Inspire for the ladies, used to come in a 2A, which is narrow. Um, over the last couple of seasons, um, we've seen narrow widths just ever so slightly fall away from some suppliers and some brands. There are a couple of brands out there that are still doing 2A widths, um, and I do hope that Mizuno consider making a two-way in this shoe again. Um, it's a very popular width here in Australia, and I would presume also globally, but um, yeah, that would be my only, only small bit of criticism about the Wave Inspire 17, because it's ticking all the boxes for me, but certainly a narrow width in the ladies would just put the cherry on top. Okay guys, there we have it, the Wave Inspire 17. Just to recap this shoe, love the foreground contact underneath. It provides a more seamless entry to mid to toe off point. The actual shoe itself runs really smoothly now, which is fantastic. The execution on the midsole, well done Mizuno. Really nice soft landing, um, landing zone underneath that heel. And a transition from that mid to toe off point with the euphoric cushioning system just provides a perfect level of cushioning and responsiveness. Your execution on the midsole is fantastic. And also up top, a couple of changes with regards to how the shoe fits through the forefoot. A little bit more secure, a bit shallower, but certainly a very breathable shoe through there. So they have their essentially a number one shoe globally in sales for supportive runners. Mizuno, you have done it again. The Wave Inspire 17 is a credit to you and your engineer department. So if you've got any questions with this shoe, please drop it in the comments field below. If you have tried it or you ran it, I would love to hear how you have gone. Please let us know. I, lo I love listening to how people experience a specific shoe or a new shoe. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. Hit the red button down below. And until next time, stay safe, be kind to each other, and we'll see you out on the road. Take care.